Drew and Nick and Jay spoke about every band ran really long in changeover times, mainly because of backing tracks and things. There's nothing that any band can help in small venue environments, but we played a 25 minute set that was short and punky and aggressive and bright and what feels right at the moment and it's good and look forward to taking that to New York. You know, the sets felt good for a little while and new things have always been good. We've been really fortunate over the last six months to sort of uh, decide that we want to continue to get heavier as opposed to going in the opposite direction. So, so uh, thanks for the compliment. Like, uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, we're, we're still making it up definitely, along. you've definitely gone the heavier route, and it yeah, is uh, yeah. it is very welcome. Thank oh, you. Oh, that's, that's the sort of music that we listen to a lot of anyway. So eventually, that's got to. Yeah. I mean, we've been working towards a heavier road for a little while, and but it was really once we took the control of the band into ourselves that we really were allowed to do it. We properly for ourselves, and that meant that we had to record ourselves and look after ourselves and whatnot. But that's what we felt needed to happen, so that's what's happening. Cool. Good. And so, what, so what's next then after America? Uh, America. Head, uh, head back into the studio again. We've still been working on. Uh, I've only got four new tracks that we've sort of been working on recently, and hopefully we'll try and and record two more of those. We'll put it out as like trying to release things as long as we can anyway. So. We started playing them down in some regional gigs in WA before we came here, and just getting them ready, I suppose. To go finish them off. Cool. And for you guys, what's um, you know, what what have you? I know you've got a bit of new music to promote, and what are you what are you up to at the moment? What's coming next? Um, I guess that you know you, you, you go to, go to something like this, you embark on a trip like this without a totally clear idea of what you want to get out of it. So much you want to get something out of it, and really kind of something will come up. Hopefully, <laughs> I reckon for us, it's the the thing we're most passionate about is recording. So, you know, we want to get back in the studio as soon as we can start smashing out some more songs. Um, and playing Australia again. We, haven't, we don't play Australia enough because we live in Tassie. We tour as much as we can, but there's that tyranny of distance for us. So, play there a bit more. You, you, both, you both have the tyranny of distance. Yeah, yeah. To <laughs> <laughs> yeah yours is actually worse, so it's yeah, just occurred to yeah. me. <laughs> the most isolated city in the world. Capital city in the world. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, Tasmania. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I guess like we obviously everyone goes to CMJ hoping to get some more sort of uh, promotion out of it. You want to try and network and um, get your music into the hands of people that wouldn't really have the opportunity to find it otherwise. Um, but I mean, I guess it's the same with um, you guys. We we're like just proud of our sort of energy on stage, and that's just something that. You, tour a lot and you don't necessarily see a lot of anymore. Actually that's something that's really interesting everyone's been saying that a lot of the bands in America, in particular LA, they'll rehearse for like a year before they even play a gig so that it's just so tight and so organised and and we kind of like don't have that idea it's a little <laughs> bit more like just go up on stage and, and try and be honest and, yeah, and if, a, if yeah, you, so. you drop a chord, who gives a fuck, you yeah. know what I mean? Not to be disparaging of course, like being tight is also a good thing, yeah, but yeah. we, I think it's not like, top of the list of priorities There's an us. Australian tradition almost to be like a bit nuts. You mean punk as fuck? Punk as fuck would be a good way to put it. Yeah, and so that's a good opportunity to try and bring that across in these like like you said, like 25-30 minute sets. You have to try and it's like five or six songs and you've got to really just punch people in the face with it. If you can, yeah. It's a good thing to try. How how have you felt that's gone so far? Pretty well. Yeah. Pretty well. I mean we couldn't do it at Balcony TV obviously because it was like a more restrained acoustic gig. But I think a few people got slightly wide-eyed at our House of Blues show. This was a pretty intimate venue. Yeah. Nah, Most really well, I think. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, not like the bands before. Yeah, not to be disparaging. Bad mouth everyone. That was the, was the, like, yeah. I think it was something that they had to see in that venue for a while. Yeah. Yeah, totally with it, that one. Your thoughts of punching people in the face? <laughs> musically, musically. We've never seen ourselves live, so we don't know That's the dilemma, isn't it? You never quite know. Do I really look that daggy? Yes. 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 Yes.